taking a look at, you've been with the, the organization how long? It, it, eight? Since, uh, 2012. Yeah. So, I mean, you, holy cow, man. So being able to build this system that was built before, and now this huge pivot, we're talking about huge differences in, and correct me if I'm wrong, architecture, framework. I mean, what did you in the engineering team have to do? And were you excited to do something like that? Was that a challenge that just, you just thought you had to meet? Yeah, 100%. Look, I mean, I feel like a day one employee right now. It's just <laughs> like in 2012 when I, when I joined. We, we've been through these stages. We talked about it with the engineering team recently, right? Like when uh -huh. we joined, we were building this second generation of ATS with Sleek UI, built-in marketplace, you know, where people actually could collaborate. That yeah. was just not an admin system. No one used it. Right. So, and it was so much fun. We were pushing features every month and, and like we were building new things. And then as we've become more and more successful, we had larger and larger customers that put like more and more demand on the system. So we had to just mature ourselves to respond to these needs because these were some of the largest organizations in the world, uh, you know, multinational. We had to take a few steps back and, and mature ourselves. And now everything's new again, right? This technology changes so rapidly and we need to adapt so fast to it. And, and we're building so many new things uh, that it just feels like a, like a day one. And we, when we were prepping for that, we were talking about it with a lot of people, um, a lot of consultants, CTOs, uh, Amazon team. And there was no paved way yet, uh, right? It's not a solved problem. It, you, you don't get like straight answers uh, right. how to build it. So this is exciting. It's, it's challenging, right? And then Rebecca just mentioned how we, at some point in time, look at the roadmap and... and thought, hey, will these features be relevant in six months from now? And we decided to just uh, pause everything, stop the world, right? And, and that was uh, pretty shocking. I actually uh, wasn't, um, I couldn't believe that Rebecca made that choice to just basically stop the world. So why? Why couldn't you believe it? Because that's a massive investment. Just, it, it is, right? but you saw what was happening, right? So Yeah, yeah but like, People are often just, you know, repeat and continue to do what they're used to do. And yeah. it takes just a lot of God and courage to do that. And I think, you know, we have a, a CPO becoming CEO. And this is just such an amazing move because, because it, she did that. Um, and what we did is basically 30% of R&D went into aggressive discovery. We were just try to chat with as many customers as humanly possible mm -hmm. just to figure it out. And, and we were just, you know, trying to imagine uh, that new product, 70% of the team, most of the engineers, we were sharpening the ax, right? So we were just focusing on productivity, making sure that we're gonna reshape the, the tech stack so it's ready for the, you know, AI-assisted uh, development mm -hmm. and for what's coming, right? So like, we, we really took that time to sharpen the ax and yeah, it, it, it works so well for us. So you talk about R&D on the customer side, what about the product side? What different types of products did you try on the LLM side of the house to yeah. be able to kind of like pick and choose? And how many are there in your stack today with regard to the different types of AI? Yeah, so this is super important, right? Uh, there's so many models just popping up and appearing yes. right every day. You cannot lock yourself in, right? Yes. So, so just the first decision we made is just we needed this abstraction layer between us and all these LLMs just to be able to switch them, right? And, and just adjust. So we are on AWS, we use Bedrock. Bedrock is basically the technology that allows you to connect to different models, right? So right now we use Claude Sonnet and Claude Haiku. Uh, but, you know, Gemini is just like, you know, they released a lot of great models. Uh, DeepSeek, right? It's available on uh, through Bedrock. Yeah. There's just many, many other models um, available there. And because of that proxy and that, you know, that layer that we have, we can replace them, right? Of course, it's not for free. You need to test everything, but at least we're not locking ourselves in. We know that, you know, six months from now, someone will show up with a more capable model that might be better suited for our needs. And yeah. we just want to have uh, an ability to switch. Have you ever been this flexible before? from an architecture standpoint? Ooh. Yeah, like we're 12 years old, 13 years old system, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there are millions of lines of code already there, yeah. right? So it's not that, um, 
we can shift everything and just like that, right? Right. But based on the benchmarks that I have, um, I think we're just pretty nimble, right? And uh, so one is like, one thing is the technology. We kept technology very standard. We only have like three programming ecosystems in. We didn't like explode it into dozens and dozens of different technologies. And that's uh, why uh, it is just easy for us to maintain it because we have very, very unified stack. That's one thing. Second thing is I got super tenured team. Uh, I think the average ten tenure right now is almost four years, which is for tech, it's pretty unique. Yeah. I've got a bunch of people that just celebrated a decade here, a bunch of people, eight, nine years, and they have this massive domain knowledge and they can just, they just know the system inside out. They can change it, they can tweak it, right? So this is like, I'm super grateful for that team. Uh, and they're like buzzing right now. They're like, you know, I like bet. kids in the you know, candy, candy shop. Store, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so that, these, are, these are the two reasons. Yeah. So talking about obviously that, that to me would think, I, I would think it would be great for retention, number one. Also, the weed out the weed out the ones who obviously don't belong if they're not used to a, a fast moving environment because you're really going from long standing brand to startup like that, yeah. right? What about the hiring side for you guys? Does this make it even more exciting going after new new talents? Because I mean, you're not you're not handing them. A, you know, an old legacy code, you're saying, look, we're adapting, we're nimble, and this is what we can do. Tell, tell me about that. And I'm sure, because I'm sure you've had to do some hiring since. Uh, yes, but I was very limited. Look, I mean, since we launched Winston, my phone is just like ringing all the time. Like there are old buddies that, you know, uh, left or my, you know, friends that we did work in, in other businesses, they're just uh, asking, hey, what are you doing? What are you cooking? Hey, what are you using? What's your tech stack now? And yeah, people are interested. And, and I think, yes, this is great for uh, attracting talent. Uh, we don't want to hire that much. We actually want to stay flat. We got a strong team, a lot of people. Um, probably this year, we're going to invest heavily in making that team super productive, right? We want to buy them these Iron Man suits so that they can just 10x themselves, right? And it's, uh, you know, AI is not a silver bullet, right? right. Uh, we need to all know that engineers do not code 100% of the time, probably 50% or maybe 40% because a lot of time they spend talking to customers, trying to figure out the architecture, uh, understanding the problem, reviewing the code, testing it, maintaining, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone says, okay, um, AI will write code and, and make you like 10% 10, 10 faster, 20% faster, it's just gonna make that, you know, that, that part of it faster. But there are like other opportunities that we want to tap on. And this is just around like, you know, designing the architecture, reviewing that code, bug fixing, where really there are a new set of tools that are agentic, uh, right? So agentic, not only in the, in the hiring space, but also for us engineers. Right. Help us, uh, you know, like it's your, like your buddy, like your intern or like, you know, a friend um, coding alongside you and helping you build the experiences. So probably that's what we're going to focus the most this year. Yeah. So really doubling down, not just on the AI side for the, the product, yeah. but for the team to be able to help them. And we've heard many stories about taking an entry level software developer and, and, and boosting them through using yeah. AI or some of the debugging programs, those types of things. Yeah. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. Look, this is, uh, it's not that simple. There's this, um, popular thing called 70% rule right now. Mm -hmm. um, it basically says, if you're not an engineer, AI can get you 70% there quickly, but the last 30% is just super slow, Yeah. right? The last polish, that last part of shipping something useful to the customer, something that's secure, compliant, that scales, uh, that, it's, uh, that it's really polished. If you're not intimately understanding what the code just got thrown on you, um, you're going to have really hard time working with that, right? So actually, the uh, AI coding assistants like Copilot, they are great for seniors, for experienced people that know that what just got generated, they just suddenly got this code. And if you observe, watch them working with it, they're just not just accepting it. They're starting to rework it and update it and improve it a little bit. Yeah. So they constantly refine it. And that's how they work, right? So they, you know, 
the the uh, the boilerplate code, the, the the boring stuff is generated for them, but they immediately go and refine it, and yeah. that's you know where you you get that productivity in. So it's it's not a silver bullet. It's not that easy. Like you know, you have a, a person without an experience that could suddenly crunch production ready code. Right.